Okay, so we've looked at masks and we've looked at applying masks to layers. So we've um, we've been selecting things like text layers and we've been applying masks through the, the shape tools and the pen tool and we've gotten as far really as animating that mask through the mask path property. So this is where where we're at really I suppose in terms of masks, albeit in much more complex ways. Um, so the the thing that's happening here is we've got a, a piece of text that is static and we have a mask that's moving across that text. Now that's fine um, until you want to create some sort of a situation where you want the opposite to be the case, where you have, just deselect the mask there, where we have a piece of text moving but the mask itself is static. Now this provides us with a bit of a problem in that whenever we apply a mask to an object and then move that object because the mask is attached to that object such as a piece of text then it's going to move with the text so you need to employ a different method of creating a static mask uh, that text can move or any object can move freely in and out of such as with this um, simple text animation here okay so what we'll see here is that the the text is moving but that we have um, a, a static mask okay um, there you can see the mask and you can see the text moving in and out of it so this could be used for any real you know that the there's an infinite amount of ways that this could be used creatively but um i'll talk about the the technique now uh what this uses is essentially a what's called a track mask or track mat rather sorry and that is applied to a different layer so the the theory or the the process is fairly simple in that you, you put the mask on another layer and it can be anything but the most simple one to use is a solid. So a color solid is created, you apply the mask to the color solid, you place that layer directly above the layer that you want to be masked, in this case the, the letter is rack mat, and then you assign the track mat on that layer to be the layer directly above it, which is in this case alpha mat solid green 3. Okay, so what you're doing is you're creating the mask on another layer and then you're directing the layer you want to be masked to that layer through this drop down here. You can see the track mat uh, at the top there. So I'll walk through this effect by just deleting these, um, these two layers here and I'll just start with my T. So the T is static, it's not doing anything. I suppose the, the illusion here is that I want it to look like the text is coming from the T or from behind the T or you know, appearing to the right hand side without o crossing over or going behind it. So I'll create my text take that down in size yeah. I think I've just typed onto the same. Okay, I'll undo that. Okay, there we go. And I'll position that roughly where I want it to end up. Okay, so the the way that I go about doing this is to first of all create a solid. Now, obviously, I can't see my text now, so I can't accurately mask where I want that um, to be revealed. So what I do is I take down the transparency or the opacity to around you know 50% so I can see what I'm looking at and I'll again put the mask on the green solid layer. That's important. So I'm putting the mask on the green solid layer through selecting it, getting the rectangle tool and what I should see is a kind of a transparent or semi-transparent green box because I'm masking that solid but I'm outlining the text because I want it to actually be applied to the, the, the rack mat text layer. Now, um, at this point, I need to make sure that my solid layer that I'm going to be using as my track mat is directly above the text that I want to be masked. So at this point, you could, you know, call this rack mat mask or something like that because you could have, you know, as many of these as you need in the same composition. It could get a little bit hard to follow. And the next step then is simply to go to the layer that I want to be masked. In this case, rack mat, select alpha mat, and then rack mat mask. So it actually looks for the name of the layer directly above it, and then it asks for what exactly from this do you want to use as the masking data. Now, 
we haven't looked at Luma or anything like that. So it's it's going to, if you if you use a mask, it's always going to be alpha matte, the one that you select. So I click on that, and what you'll notice is that the the green disappears because when the solid layer is assigned as a track mat it actually switches off all of the visible pixels in that layer so all of the green pixels within that solid gets switched off because now it's just a utility layer it's not really a visible uh, thing uh, now what it does on the other hand do is it maintains the transparency value that I gave to the solid so I need to go back in quickly I can hit T or open up my transform properties and just bring the, tran the opacity back up to 100% I'm actually using transparency op and opacity here interchangeably. They mean the same thing, effectively. Now, I can go back now and start animating. So if I go out a few seconds, let's say to five seconds here, and hit P on my track mat layer just to bring up my position property, keyframe it at the end position because I want it to come out and settle on that particular part of the screen. Come back a few seconds, and I can you know, I can slide the text along out here, or you can use the... the um, properties in the layer as well. So I'll slide that back now. You'll see it disappears when it gets to the edge of where that mask was created. And uh, I'll quickly ease out of that by hitting easy ease in on the second keyframe and play that back. That's just rendering there so I can go back and hit that again. Okay, a bit slow but you get the idea. I'll just deselect the mask or the, um, the layer better. Okay, so that's one implementation of uh, a track mat. Now I'm going to quickly show you another slightly more complex way of working with it, just to give you another idea of how this can be used. And it's to use multiple layers and multiple track mats to create the effect of kind of splitting text apart. So I'll do it quickly and you'll see the end result in a moment. Okay, so there's my, my text, and this is going to be the reference for all of the layers that I use. So it's the one piece of text. Split the text. Create a solid. Doesn't matter what color it is. I could name it here if I wanted. I'll call it uh, Top Mat, and you'll see why in a moment. And bring down the opacity so I can see what I'm looking at. And I'm going to mask off the top part of the text roughly midway and I'll assign that now as a track mat Oops. Go back into my composition track mat, alpha mat, top mat now you'll see all of the things that you would expect to happen have happened bring that back to 100 but what I want to do is I want to actually have both the top and the bottom visible so that I can then manipulate them, move them around uh, independently of each other. So I'll hit Command and D to duplicate, or I could do copy and paste, it doesn't matter, this is just a quicker way of doing it. Now, so I have a top mat, I have another one called top mat which I'll call lower mat. And what I'll do with lower mat is I'll go into its mask, quickly double click it to select it so that I can pull the top one or the duplicate of the top mask down so it's now a lower mask. So what I have now is I've got top and bottom both separated by masking them off independently from each other. So now I can do really anything I want to the top. Now obviously if you go outside of the mask you won't be able to, to do much but that's the idea so you can do some pretty creative things with masks um, using alpha or track mats rather set to alpha so if you want to think of it in its simplest sense it's just allowing you to have a static mask that things can move in and out of and then you can just you know see how you can apply that to, to your logos